All right, I'm Mike Caton from Ace Method Coaching. Uh, on this weekly live stream, reviewing videos from some of the athletes that have sent them in to me. Um, let me see here. Even though I said I was only going to do five, I'm doing eight this week. I've got many more sent to me, so I, I'm sorry for those of you who I'm not going to get to. Um, it's very complicated, but I can't do them all. But remember, um, I do much bigger, better versions of this. It's called a virtual coaching session. So if you really want my help, um, I recommend investing in that. It's not expensive for what you're going to get. Everybody um, really raves about it. And it has uh, so far 100% satisfaction um, because nobody is... They've, everybody's always told me they enjoyed it and thought it was well worth the money. So, something to consider. So, here's who I'm looking at today. Um, let's see here. Carmela, Medwin, Mandy, Dion, Obi, Brilliant. It's either Marcia or Marcia, I'm not sure. And Ethan. Okay? So, I'm going to... Not in that order, though. Well, actually, yes, I'm going to do it in that order. Okay, so here is Carmela, a junior in high school. She's new um, to hurdling. She just wants to get better and get her three steps down. So let's take a look. Okay, so Carmela... For a beginner, I think you're doing really well, the fact that you can already three-step. I would imagine, though, looking at this, that you probably can't three-step a whole race because getting to the second hurdle was pretty tough. Um, here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, never um, practice with the hurdles at full spacing, okay? Okay. That seems like it's a good idea because you're thinking, I need to get good at, I need to be able to make it at this distance. Well, here's what you need to know is that when you're practicing, because you are doing multiple repetitions, you don't have the energy of the meet, um, the people in the crowd, you're not excited, so you don't have the adrenaline flowing that enables you to run faster and jump higher and hurdle better because of the the hormones running through your body. I don't know if they're hormones, but anyway, um, that it's really difficult at practice. So hurdling like this is very, very difficult, and it, it leads to you having bad practice and teaching yourself bad habits. And so you never really get great. I, am, I recommend pinching the hurdles together probably by two feet, um, getting and then running over them with three steps trying not to reach out the way that you are and I, you'll do so much better because you actually learn how to hurdle and then when you go to the meet it's going to feel just like that okay so that's what i would say um, there's really nothing wrong with your hurdling except the fact that you are running with these really elongated stretched out strides that are slowing you down OK, because they're stretched out and because you're landing with your feet, your heels so far out in front of you, it's putting on the brakes. So if you could just run faster without braking and running more normal sprint technique, you'd be surprised at how well that will help you get to the next hurdle. So do it based on speed, not so much as race as I'm um, stretching out. OK. OK, going to Medwin. Okay, Medwin is 11th grade also, second year hurdling, wants to know how to get his lead leg down faster. Okay, Medwin, so the reason why your lead leg isn't coming down faster is because you are too close to the hurdle whenever you go to jump over it. I'll show you right here. The first hurdle is a good example. Let 
because you're so close to the hurdle, you have to take a very steep uh, jump up at the hurdle. And that puts you too high over the hurdle. And it also makes the top of your jump be right here, which is actually a little bit on the downside of the hurdle, which means you're going to be have to land way out here. So you cannot bring your tray leg down really quickly when you're like that. It just doesn't work. So what you need to do is take off from a little farther back, jump more flat at the hurdle versus going high over the hurdle. And then when you come down off this, because when you start clearing the hurdle, then you're going to be coming down on the hurdle versus coming up on the hurdle like you did. And then pull your hips forward and your lead leg will drop quickly and you're, you will touch down around here versus way out here like you did. And it'll be much, much better. Okay. Um, let me see here. Moving on to Mandy. <clears throat> if I can open this up. Mandy, 10th grader, brand new to hurdling. And she is here running her leg of a shuttle hurdle relay. Come on. Come on, my, okay, here we go. So Mandy, lots to learn here. You look really brand new. And sometimes you're taking four steps, sometimes you're taking five steps. But none of them are really, um, oh, how do I say this? It's not really what I would call hurdling. What I, what I look at here is what's called running and jumping, right? So you're running to these hurdles and then you're jumping over them too high. And then that, and that means you have to crash down on the other side. And then you run again, start picking up your speed, slowing down jump over the hurdle again. What I recommend you do is take a step backwards and um, learn properly. Because what I think is you're, you just went right into jumping over these barriers like this at the proper spacing and probably never learned that hurdling is really about this feeling, this what's called a rhythm um, of just running and flowing over a hurdle. Um, because what happens when you do that is you have so much more speed carrying over the hurdle and so much speed coming off the hurdle that enables you to get to the next hurdle so much easier. Every time you give up your speed going into a hurdle and then jump up high, it, it just ruins all your speed. See the way right here that you gravity's crashing. See how your knee buckled right here? You have to overcome that. So you've already lost all your speed and now you got to get to the next hurdle and you don't have it built up and you're tired. And so I recommend you um, learn the real sensation of hurdling first. Um, you'd be a good candidate for my hurdling 101. And what I'm going to do I'm wholly hesitant here. I'm very easily have no problem giving you my hurdling 101 because um, that will show you how to get started hurdling as an absolute beginner. The problem is today's a busy day. I go from this right into another meeting and then also working on with somebody who's helping me edit a video and I don't want to forget. If I forget to send you this, email me to remind me that I'm that I owe you my hurdling 101 and I'll send that to you. Okay. Okay, moving on to Dion. Dion, I really enjoyed your video and and your notes and your passion. And so I'm really so here's Dion. Dion is a 12th grader but just started hurdling and already running some pretty good times and has this amazing goal as his first year of a hurdler of um, trying to go to state and wants to know how to get faster. So let me just say some things. You are definitely athletic 
and fast and powerful. And I'm impressed that you are um, running already flirting with the 15s, trying to get down into the 14s. Because, and don't take any of this personal, but there's so much wrong with your technique that it's shocking that you're winning this race. It, again, this is you're doing it purely based on your natural abilities of athleticism. Now, if we could, if you could accomplish some of the things I'm going to tell you, who no telling how fast you could be. Okay, so first, and I'm going to be quick about this stuff. First, your lead arm. See how you're swinging your lead arm over the top of your head? Don't do that. Just shoot it forward, pull it back. Okay, swinging it over like that is messing with your rhythm and it is sending you with a rotational force going clockwise that you're going to have to deal with. It's going to make you off balance. In fact, see how your body is. I can tell right here that you're not just leaning forward, but you're also leaning over to the right. So you're off balance already. The other thing is your lead leg. You're lifting your lead leg too straight. It needs to be more tucked under. Like this guy right here, it's funny because you're beating him, but he has better form than you. It's just because you're faster and more athletic, right? So you're just, again, pulling it off. But your lead leg should be tucked underneath you and then just drive that knee right to the top and it'll be better. Okay, so the other thing about your lead arm, once you get it over there, it's, it's across your body, which we don't want. We need to don't let it cross the midline of your body. And when you pull it back, you should be pulling it back with a bent arm at 90 degrees and your hand should go right past your knee. But you have your straight. Now, your trail leg. Actually, not bad. OK. Your trail arm, on the other hand, is just out here to the side when it should be behind you bent at 90 degrees or less. And then you'll touch down quick. The other thing I can see that you're kind of squatted down as you're touching down. You want to be up really tall as you can. OK, so as you come off this hurdle and your trail arm comes forward, try to bring your hips with you. That'll drop your trail leg down really quickly. OK, then you'll get to this next hurdle. Yeah, same things all over again. Uh, I take back what I said about your trail leg. So see how you're lifting your lead leg? I mean, it's bent at 90 degrees, but it should be tucked into your butt, your heel to your butt right now. And then your trail leg, it's not bad there, but your whole, hmm, at this point right here, your trail leg should be out from the side of your body. Yours is hanging kind of low, which is forcing you to jump higher over the hurdle. And you are going to clip a lot of hurdles with that ankle right there. OK, so that's easy to work on. You, my friend, would do well with my hurdling 201. It does. Or here, actually, here's what you could do. Go to my website and I've got a hurdle technique cheat sheet. Download that. There's also a supplemental video that's part of that. Um, and look at that so you can work on improving your hurdle, your, improving your technique. OK, moving on to OB. I think it's OB Felix is your name versus Felix OB. Sent me a few videos. So did Dion. I love this video. I love the color. This looks like colors that I would see in a magazine or something and just so perfectly filmed. And then you've got another one over here. Now, this is an interesting question that you're asking me. And just so you'll know, I'm going to turn this into a YouTube video, not this one here, but I'm going to take your video and your question and make a YouTube video just out of this topic. OK? Because it's a good question. So Obi, again, also email me and let me know if your name is Obi Felix or Felix Obi. I can't, I can't tell because you did it two different ways. <clears throat> anyway, this is 
him or Obi right here or Felix right here, green shorts, lime green shoes. Um, he's saying, I can't get my lead leg straight. So here's some things to know. Well, let me let me watch you first. Come on. A very uh, athletic group of men here, young men. I don't know how old you are, just a second year hurdling. God, I just love those colors. They're amazing. It's obvious not the U.S. Okay, because our all of our stadiums are just cement colored here. Okay, I'm going to pull this over here so I don't have to wait for that every time. Fortunately, you're the farthest away from the camera. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing. So you were faster than all these guys out of the blocks and fastest to, to taking off right here. Yet, by the time we get off the first hurdle, you're in now last place. So it's your hurdling. Your running is fast. Your hurdling is not fast. And so if we look at your friend here, he has almost a straight leg. I can't see you until... I get over here. Okay, so oh, some things to notice. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, is, let's see here, you are running on your heels big time. I don't know if you did that to the first hurdle. Let me let me back up. <clears throat> yeah, you need to get on the balls of your feet, get them underneath you. You'll be so much faster. And then the other thing is I think that you actually can lengthen your leg out enough. See, this looks pretty good here, right? Um, the problem is as you get over the hurdle, you start to bend it again. And notice your friend here, this is more typical, is, see you open, so like right here, his heel is at the hurdle, and he's about 95% bent. Um, his trail leg is down, and when he gets right here, as he's going over the hurdle, he pulls his knee up to get his um, thigh perpendicular to the hurdle and straight out from his hips, where you have your leg, it's not, it's not as open, but this is not bad, right at the same point. But notice that as he is going off the hurdle, the reason why I'm gonna identify him is because his is more indicative of what really good hurdlers do, right? They go over the hurdle like this with it almost straight, and then it stays like that. In fact, opens up typically, I'm sorry, more straightens out as they come down here, right? See how his leg has been straight almost the whole time? Whereas you, you straightened it out right here, almost, and then you started hooking it. And that's... I think your problem, you also jumped more up versus forward. Like, watch this guy. I want you to notice his hips and see the curve that it takes as it goes over the hurdle. It barely raised up at all, both of these guys. But when we watch you, so here's your hips here, compare it to the seats here and the bar here, you jump way up. You are about, you know, you, I know you're not in inches. I don't, I don't really know how many centimeters that would be, but you are way high over the hurdle. This is what's killing you and the fact that you're running on your heels. So, well, there, right? So, what 
what you need to do, I mean, you need to let me know if this is an issue of flexibility. If you have a tight hamstrings, let me know and I'm going to send you my hurdle warm up video. It's part of my hurdling 201 um, because there is a drill in there that um, I do with my hurdlers that would could help with this. But it might just be that you developed bad habit in your technique and you're just doing it wrong. I, I don't know. So I do because I'm going to make a video about this. I want you to to email me back so we can start a dialogue because I have some more questions for you. I'll be able to help you out a whole lot more. OK, but also you need to push harder off this leg. See how your knee is bent here and it still bends and it never really locks out. And it means you're not pushing hard enough at it to commit forward into the hurdle. OK, plus your your I don't know if I already mentioned this, but you're lifting uh, a leg that never bends enough at this. I mean, ideally, right here, your heel would be right up by your butt. And then right here, you straighten it out and then you hold it straight as you go down. So it's hard to say, but you definitely need to fix some things. You also need my hurdling 201 or actually what you need is my hurdle technique cheat sheet. Um, so go to my website, download that and look at that. You, you got a few things going on here, but definitely let's start a dialogue about these things so I can make this video and it'll help you even more. But so it, it, to answer your question, I'm not convinced that you can't do it. I just think maybe you have established bad habits and now you're jumping too high over the hurdle. That's kind of what I think. OK, um, so that's it. OK, brilliant. Yes, that's her name. Brilliant. Brilliant is 10th grader, third year hurdling, having a hard time with three or four steps. Um, never really had a coach to show her how to do it. She's making too many steps, <clears throat> wants to know how to get faster, do three steps, and on. Okay, so brilliant. You are four stepping and doing a pretty good job of it. But these look like when we watch you, these are like tiny little steps. And my my gut tells me that if you were running the 100 meter dash without hurdles, that you wouldn't run with tiny steps like this. OK, so the fact that you're four stepping comfortably with tiny steps, in fact, too close to the hurdles and the hurdles are all at the mark and you're at practice makes me think that you could three step. OK, but the way you're going to need to do this, and this is outlined in my hurling 101. Also, I've got a video out on YouTube that talks about this, too. What you need to do is pinch these hurdles in closer. What I would recommend you do is pinch them in closer to a spacing that works for you. So go on my YouTube channel. You get an option, either email me and tell me to send you a copy of my hurdling 101 or go to my YouTube channel and there's a video about how to three step. And it shows you this strategy where you get somebody to help you figure out how far your hurdles should be spaced. And if you watched me do my video series that I did this past summer where I helped that height, a young girl named Reagan. I did this with her too, where I have her run over the hurdle and then run as fast as she can. And I count one, two, three steps. And then I count out six feet from there. And that's where I put the hurdle. And then you see if you can do that. And if you can do the minor adjustments and then you put out hurdle three and hurdle four at that same spacing. 
So what will happen is you will be able to three-step those hurdles. And you might be thinking, that's not going to help me because that's not how far the hurdles are in the meet. I understand that. But you, what you need to do is you need to break your habits of the way you're running and hurdling and get in, learn a, a three-step rhythm, but also doing it full speed with confidence. And what you're going to find out very quickly is those hurdles are too close and you gradually spread them out. And then once they feel too close and you spread until eventually you get to the point where you are, let's say, 12 to 16 inches away with your spacing for what this actually is. And you will be able to three step that. And if you can do that, you can go to a meet and three step and it'll feel the same way. I know it seems crazy, but I've talked about it a million times. Um, it will work. It'll work. That's what I recommend you do, okay? Because you look very capable to me. Okay, moving on. It's either Marcia. Some people spell Marcia like this, or some people pronounce Marcia like this. Marcia, ninth grader, st stuttering between the hurdles. Those are her words. Okay. She is this person over... I believe it is in lane three. Yes, lane three. Three stepping, four stepping, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is, I'm going to go with Marcia, but you know that it could be Marcia. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing is you at the beginning of the race, you were with the leaders and then they all, because they're a little bit better at actually hurdling than you, but I think you probably might be faster than these other girls, but you just don't have your hurdling right. So, Basically, the, versus me just repeating myself, everything that I just told Brilliant before this video is what you need to do, okay? You don't have confidence. You are running slower than you really want to because you're trying to get under control. You're taking baby steps and you're jumping too close to the hurdle, which therefore makes you too high over the hurdle which you, keep, you are basically losing all your speed at every hurdle. If you could just get the confidence to go fast and low over a hurdle and then land with good speed because you didn't give it all up by jumping high and slowing down and putting on the brakes, you'd have so much more speed going into the second hurdle and you just repeat this all the way down. Now, I think that you could three-step. I really do. Um, you look like you can do it. So I recommend the same thing that I just told um, Brilliant, Br Brilliant is um, either get my Hurling 101 or email me for it or check out that video I have on YouTube and see that strategy um, that I just outlined for Brilliant to how to practice three-stepping so you can get comfortable with the rhythm. Trust me. I've coached many state champions, many of them girls, and they, they're running like low 15 seconds in the hurdles to mid to high 14 seconds in the 100 meter hurdles. And we never ever practiced with the hurdles at full spacing and full height because that's not how you get faster. It seems counterintuitive, but that's the way you do it. You need to get good at the rhythm, learn how to have good practices so therefore you can have good meets, okay? Trust me, this advice will help you a lot, okay? Also, because you're so close to that hurdle, you're having to go really high and you reach your, you're reaching your peak about a foot past the hurdle. And if you go back to the beginning of this live stream, when I was talking to... You know what? I take that back. It was another video. I do so many videos, I get confused. But anyway, 
that's what you need. Okay, now moving on to Ethan. Ethan is a middle schooler, eighth grader, second year hurdling, and wants to know how many steps should he be taking between the hurdles. So here he is, one, two, three, third lane right here, taking teeny tiny five steps, and you win the race. Okay, so basically what you need to know. is stop doing that because what you're doing is you're developing really bad habits of taking small steps and then also um, putting on the brakes and being too close to the hurdle when you take off and that's these are some hard habits to break so at a minimum i would tell you to start four stepping so alternate legs between the hurdles so that you don't have to take such tiny steps and be closer and, and be so close. That's the one thing. I might also have you do the exact same strategy that I just told Marcia and Brilliant. So go back and watch what I told them about learning how to three-step. You might be able to three-step. Um, yeah, because look right here, you're so close to the hurdle that you can't even lift your lead leg properly because you'll kick it with your shin. So you're swinging it around sideways over the hurdle, right? All this is just ruining your speed. And if you just said, I'm going for it, I'm just gonna run full speed and just leap at it from farther away and stay low, you could probably three-step. Um, but in the meantime, if you wanna go from four-step get good at both legs and then three-step, either one, but that definitely is what I would recommend to you because this is just, you look like you're, you know, you've got the ability, you're staying nice and low, which is shocking for how high you are of the hurdle, but I'm afraid you're gonna teach yourself some bad habits. So, everything that I told them, if you want Hurling 101, email me, or find that video on my YouTube channel. I'll offer you the same thing, but that's it. Okay, let's see here. Let me, I'm, that was all eight of the people today. And again, those, these are really quick, like three to five minute versions of what I usually do whenever I do a virtual coaching session. I'll, I might spend a half hour talking about somebody's video and giving tons and tons of feedback and, and stuff like that. So, so people, if you want me to look at your video, you can go to my website at asmethecoaching at gmail.com and you can see how to submit it, just like these people do to be on this live stream. Um, but a lot of people don't get selected because I can't do, I can only do so many. Um, plus these are really short versions of an actual virtual coaching session. So um, just know that. Uh, that's what I recommend you do. So I do get a few questions. Somebody said, hello. Someone else also said, can you give me a list to get faster at the hurdles? Yes, that list would be my hurdle technique cheat sheet. So you go to acemethodcoaching.com. That's A-C-E, methodcoaching.com. In the freebie section, you look for this thing called hurdle technique cheat sheet. And it's a detailed spreadsheet of everything that your technique should be and the common mistakes and the ways to fix them. And then Devin asked, is hurdle technique analysis free? Again, yes and no. I mean, I do paid versions of these and they're much more detailed than this. What I do on this show is, because people do submit for a free video, for a free video analysis, I just choose a handful of those each week. So a lot of people I don't get to. Um, but if you want a good one, I have a paid version of that. That's called a virtual coaching session. So anyway, I hope that uh, you all learned something from this. Um, I enjoy this. I enjoy seeing these videos. 
Uh, some of these I am going to turn into, use them as content on YouTube videos. And I hope they help you. So you guys have a good day.